Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, we speak to one of Korea's top para badminton shuttlers, Lee Sam Sop, about his struggles, success, and aspirations. And we take you to the UAE for the finals day action of the Dubai World Super Series Finals. In the world of para badminton, Korea is a revered traditional powerhouse, especially in the wheelchair category. The country's para shuttlers are a force to be reckoned with. Leading the East Asians' charge is six-time men's world champion Lee Samsop. A mainstay on the podium at virtually every tournament, the veteran star is one of the best-known faces in wheelchair badminton. Not only has Lee monopolized the gold medal in the WH1 category, He's also the only player to win a title at every edition of the BWF Para Badminton World Championships since its inception in 2007. The latest installment concluded last month, and with his hometown Ulsan as hosts, it was an emotional outing for the reigning men's singles and doubles champion. My I would like to dedicate my medals to my mother, who passed away three years ago. In my earlier days, when I won a medal, she bragged that I would be receiving a national pension. When I told her we didn't have that kind of pension yet in Korea, she actually wanted me to stop playing badminton and get a job which would give me a steady income. But from this year onwards, there is the national pension, and I may receive some pension for the medal I won this time. This is the reason I want to dedicate my medals to my mother. Now in his mid-40s, Lee is among the most consistent performers in the sport. With the inclusion of badminton in the upcoming Tokyo 2020 Paralympics, the ambitious shuttler is far from hanging up his racket as he works towards his biggest goal yet. I hope to win a gold medal at the Tokyo Paralympics. I think it's possible, although some people around me think it won't be that easy. I will stay physically fit and try my best to prepare well. Lee finally received overdue recognition for his achievements when he was named the inaugural BWF Male Para Badminton Player of the Year in 2015. But the badminton star has set his sights on many more accomplishments. I want to feel on par with able-bodied badminton players, but now I feel one level below in comparison to them. If para badminton could also have a season finale, like the Dubai World Super Series Finals has for able-bodied badminton players, we would feel even prouder of ourselves as para badminton players. It would certainly give us more motivation to train and work harder. Having this type of big international tournament would also be a good promotion for people with disabilities who are not familiar with para badminton they would even understand the sport better. And for us players, we would also like to participate in such a season finale. Vocal about the promotion and development of para badminton around the world, Lee himself is testament to what involvement in sports can do for people with disabilities. Mm, 30 years ago, I had an accident and that resulted in my disability. Even though I was disabled, I worked hard during that time because I thought having a job and earning money was the right thing for me to do. One day, my friends invited me to play badminton with them. At that time, it was not easy to look for information or establish contacts with other people with disabilities. So I only knew about para basketball and para marathon. When I actually went to play badminton, I was impressed by the people there who played para badminton very well. 
looking at them, I was inspired to learn how to play wheelchair badminton and I began to enjoy playing the game. After that day, I became addicted to playing badminton. From then on, I began to go to the hall and play every day without fail. Lee isn't the only successful Korean at para badminton. There's no dearth of talent from the country, and his teammates are strong medal contenders in several other categories. This is primarily thanks to the government's support and funding that almost equals that of mainstream sports. A full-time player himself, the right-hander wheels the racket for local club Ulsan Junggu professionally. I think it's because we have bigger resources for para badminton players than any other country. In Korea, we have para badminton associations in each city. And each of these associations has a para badminton club team to manage. We always keep a lookout for these talented para badminton players from each team and help develop them. By competing against each other, they can develop their skills. This is why Korean players do so well in the World Championships. Having taken up the sport in the early 2000s, it has been a long journey for Lee, and the highs and lows he's been through have also brought some invaluable lessons for the Korean ace to inspire new badminton enthusiasts every day. I am just very satisfied and happy that my achievements remain a part of wheelchair badminton history. My advice is, even if you are disabled physically, you can still do anything. You can achieve anything if you put your mind to it and you keep believing in yourself. So don't worry too much and just start doing it. When you challenge yourself and set personal goals and ambitions, good things will certainly follow. Lee Samsop epitomizes the qualities of any top athlete, hardworking, talented and ambitious. There's some way to go till the Tokyo Paralympics, but you can bet Korea's most decorated para badminton star will be relentless in his preparations. Instagram definitely, because I never used Snapchat. Uh, if I would choose, I would choose the wine, but I don't drink alcohol too often. Schnitzel, because I like meat. Uh, I yeah, eat meat every day, I would say, uh, so definitely the Schnitzel. Jeans, uh, I can't explain why, I just like them. Um, probably action. There are some horror movies that are good, but uh, yeah, I would prefer the action, definitely. Coming back, we bring you the action from finals day in Dubai. With digital innovations, shuttle time is now more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. So get connected to BWF's Badminton Schools program. Find out more about BWF's grassroots initiatives on these platforms. Download the app, visit the website and get active on Facebook. Your gateway to shuttle time has never been so easy.
With 2017 drawing to a close, there was just enough time for one last showcase of world-class badminton, the Dubai World Super Series Finals. This year's top eight singles players and doubles pairs from the MetLife BWF World Super Series fought hard in the desert city for four days to earn their rightful place on finals day. Top of the order of play was the mixed doubles. Fans at the Hamdan Sports Complex welcomed defending champions and current world number one Jung Se Wei and Chen Qingchen, and Hong Kong's latest sensations in mixed tandem Tang Chun Man and Se Ying Sweat. Both sides started on an equal footing in the opener, but Cheng and Chen took control at the halfway mark and began to extend the lead. First blood was drawn by the Chinese pair. One by Zing CV and Chang Ting Chen, 21-15. It was a tussle for dominance in the second game. Tang and Su looked set to push the match to a decider, but regaining their composure, the lively Cheng and Chen fought back and successfully defended their title in 40 minutes a fitting swan song to Chung and Chen's partnership. They've done it. A second consecutive title for Sheng Qi Wei and Cheng Ching Cheng. We thought we could lose because they were very strong. In a group stage, they did not put in maximum effort in their game. We put in our 100% to defeat them. The outcome was unpredictable because we've played against each other a lot of time this year. Each time we win a championship is meaningful, not just this championship. Women's singles was next, where a new champion would be crowned. Olympic silver medalist India's Pusarla V. Sindhu took to the court to face the number one seed from Japan, the gutsy Akane Yamaguchi. Pusarla had a six-point lead in the opening game when the world number two from Japan threatened to stage a comeback. But the Indian shuttler kept her nerves and crushed Yamaguchi's challenge and took the first game. Energized from the win, Pusarla was off to a good start in the second game. But on the other side of the net was the never-say-die Yamaguchi. Combining long rallies and aggressive plays, the plucky shuttler took control and successfully forced the match to a decider. Second game won by Akane Yamaguchi, 21-12. Game three was tightly contested. With both players looking tired, it was down to mental strength and survival of the fittest. A return from Pusarla that found the net handed Yamaguchi the championship point, and the diminutive Japanese took it and raced home to her first Dubai World Super Series title win after a grueling one hour, 34 minutes. I am proud and happy. It was a long and tiring match, so I am relieved it is over. Well, it's been a good year. Uh, ending of the year, it's been a very good tournament and I ended up uh, with uh, silver. So I wish uh, with the same confidence I would go much more further. And I, I know ups and downs are always there, but I, I need to learn from my mistakes and uh, get back strong. Before the fans at the Hamdan Sports Complex could catch their breath, in came two of the most explosive men's doubles pairs of 2017. The world number one from Indonesia, Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamuljo, and the reigning world champions from China, Liu Cheng and Chang Nan. It was a fiery start at the get-go. Smashes rained down on both sides, but it was the BWF Male Players of the Year who succeeded in pulling away and closed the game 21-16. The second game was equally exciting. Although the Indonesians were successful in extending the lead, it was not without having to fight off tough opposition from Liu and Chang. Buoyed by the boisterous Indonesian fans, Marcus Bernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamuljo stormed their way into the history books by clinching their seventh World Super Series title of 2017. It is certainly a special and an extraordinary feeling. This is our second hat-trick and our seventh title of the year. It has been extraordinary. It was an all-Japanese affair in women's doubles as 2017 World Championship silver medalists and number two seeds Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota walked on court to meet the number one seeds Shiho Tanaka and Koharu Yonemoto. 
Tanaka and Yonemoto began the opener brightly and defended well against their opposing teammates before wrapping up the first game. The number one seeds continued to have the upper hand in the second game, and it was cruise control all the way to seal the match. In under an hour, Shiho Tanaka and Koharu Yonemoto won their second World Super Series title of the year. The defending champion and world champion from Denmark, Victor Axelsen! Wrapping up the finals day and the last edition of the Dubai World Super Series Finals was the men's singles. Defending champion and world champion from Denmark, Victor Axelsen was up against Malaysian ace Lee Chong Wei. Right from the start, both players were out for blood. Shots came fast and furious as both Lee and Axelsen battled to dominate the first game. Even Lee locked, it was Lee who finally broke away and wrapped up the opening game 21-19. Opening game to the four-time former champion, Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia. With the Malaysian and Danish fans trying to outdo each other with their cheering, their heroes were also fighting hard to gain the upper hand in the second. Nifty plays, deceptive shots, sharp smashes and solid defences continued to be laid out in Game 2. But after 27 minutes, it was Axelsen who forced Lee to play in a deciding game. It's landed in. It's one game all. Axelsen continued with his never-give-up mode in the third game. Although Lee went for a final surge, it was too little too late. After an exhausting one hour and 24 minutes, the 2017 Dubai World Super Series Finals crown was Axelsen's. The final score read 19-21, 21 21-15. He's done it! Well, that's twice. The victor Axelsen has just got his racket in the way and got back an incredible shot. A wry smile from Lee Chong Wei. Victor Axelsen comes from a game deficit to retain his Super Series Finals title. I think every athlete loves to win, so I'm pretty happy at the moment, and uh, I feel, yeah, I feel pretty awesome to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, especially after such a you know amazing game with Lee Chong Wei, it was what you <laughs> what you dream of when you're just a small uh, kid playing badminton. It's finals uh, like these, so. I'm just really happy and really tired also. I think I tried my very best today. I think uh, with the, today is the play so well. And uh, I think the second game, uh, he lead so far, I just uh, keep up. And uh, I think the 19 all I had a simple mistake in uh, service. It's okay. I just uh, try my very best. And uh, this year is uh, my last tournament. And I'm better and can get a good uh, rest for the, this year and I prepare for next year. Yeah. After the break, we drop by Bantong Yacht Badminton School, the badminton academy in Bangkok that groomed Thailand's favourite daughter in the sport. Get connected with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favorite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos, share them with us on these social media platforms. When Ratchanok Intanon hit the headlines by becoming Thailand's first ever world junior champion in women's singles in 2009, and the country's first world champion in 2013, the school where she learned the nuances of badminton was thrown into the limelight. Bantong Yacht Badminton School became one of the most sought-after badminton academies in Bangkok. The reason I came here was because, when I was 12, I saw P. May become the world champion. I initially came only on Sundays to train. I began to like it. The training had helped to keep my body fit 
and increase the speed of my game. The young Kunlavut Vititsan also created history for both the school and for Thailand. He became the kingdom's first world junior champion in men's singles when he won the title this year. And the school hopes that their latest young protege will emulate their prized student. I am very happy because this title is Thailand's first title in men's singles. It is history in the making. Nongview is only 16 years old and if he can maintain his standard and keep raising his game, he will be able to make it like Rachanok by winning the title three times in a row. Situated an hour's drive from the bustling city centre of Bangkok, Bang Tong Yod Badminton School took shape in 1992. A small operation with little resources, it has now taken a life of its own, with more than 300 shuttlers coming through its doors, and the school has since secured stronger financial backing. We have more sponsors now, both individuals and businesses, that value the importance of Bang Tong Yok Badminton School. They also value our intention and understand our purpose why we founded this school. Of course, there's no way we can be the best, but we will continue to improve in sports science and nutrition. We will also continue to upgrade our coaches and provide the means to our players to compete in tournaments so that we can produce good athletes. Despite its growth in size and accolades, the school still maintains its core family values where players feel at home. One current example was when their women's singles ace Ratchanok Intanon was struggling to return to form after a stretch of winless runs that lasted over a year. She attributed her comeback to the encouragement and support from both her own family and the badminton school. There were many times when I received encouragement and support from the school. As athletes, you sometimes expect too much of yourself, and sometimes you don't achieve what you set out to do. There are times in a game you feel that you have to struggle with yourself, which is different from competing with the opponents. That certainly adds more pressure to yourself when you're on court. But you have your family who loves you, and a club that is like part of your family. So win or lose, they're always there to support you. Generally, we live together like a family. When there is any problem, we can all feel it. We will talk about it. We know many of these players since they were children, so we kind of understand each other. Winning and losing are common in all types of sport. There are times when athletes underperform or their physical condition is not at its peak. However, athletes like me, for example, are responsible and know what they have to do. So that is why we will also do our part to support them. What is also important is that this school is founded by my mother because of her love for badminton. Even though we had to take bank loans, we just hope that one day we will be able to produce athletes for Thailand, a world champion and an Olympic champion. We have achieved part of that, but we still have more to do. We will continue to do this out of love for the sport. From humble beginnings to a giant in the country, Bantong Yacht Badminton School will no doubt grow from strength to strength. As it continues tirelessly, the good work it started so many years ago in nurturing the next generation of Thai shuttlers. Now let's take a look at what's happening on our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week, we take you through some of the memorable moments of the year as we bid farewell to 2017. See you next week.